On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1976. We're going to be taking a look at Neil Sedaka, and he's going to be performing Solitaire. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So let's get Neil and the orchestra up on screen and see how they all get on. There was a A lonely man Who lost his love Through his indifference A heart that cared Until it died And in his silence And solitaire's the only game in town And every road that takes him Takes him down while life goes on around him everywhere He's playing solitaire And keeping to himself begins to deal But still the king of hearts is well concealed Another losing game comes to an end And he deals them out again A little hole Goes without saying There was a man A lonely man Who would command I'm just going to jump in here. As always, the link to this video is going to be in the description below so you guys can check it out there without me interrupting it. And you already get the sense, just as I jumped in, that Neil is about to lift this whole performance vocally because he sets the scene so well. Something that's really important to point out about this performance and the composition as a whole is that as soon as we start the song, in the second line of the verse, we hit the high note of the whole composition vocally. And it's something I mentioned about other compositions, the way that you often go on a journey and the highest note can be found in the chorus and then it comes back down again and you have to wait to hear that highest note. So when we've got Neil here hitting the highest note of the song, which is a G4 for reference, it means that all of the emotion, all of the expression that you're hearing is purely Neil's voice and his control dynamically, the way that he takes his foot off the accelerator. And for the most part, the whole beginning of the song, 
He's intentionally putting air into his sound. So he's just blowing a little bit of air through those vocal cords so that when we now get to this point and Neil's about to lean into his vocal sound, he'll bring those vocal cords together and minimize the air. It's something that when you're listening to this performance, you'll notice that change in gear and the change in projection because that's exactly what happens to Neil's voice once he brings those vocal cords together. Of course, we do have a little bit of help from the orchestra because they're just upping their dynamic range as well from going from a softer sound to now a louder sound and putting a little bit more into this next chorus. Just a quick word on this song from the view of an overall composition. It was written by Neil with Phil Cody and you probably know the Carpenters version of it. That's one that was certainly very very successful and well known and you really sense his input that he had personally to this song through his vocal performance. Another thing is playing the piano and the way that the piano and his voice are one because it's coming from the same person, it's got the same musical expression, so it means that all of the dynamics that you'll hear in the piano playing are mirrored vocally and that's why it just pulls you in and it's great that the orchestra as well plays so well behind Neil because it doesn't need a lot but there's just enough. When you're looking back at the great singer-songwriters or just songwriters full stop in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, they all played an instrument. They had that ability and the melodic appreciation that the ability to play an instrument gave them. So it meant that when they're writing a song, anything they came up with vocally, if they had an idea in their head even, they could come up with that melody on the instrument and now they've got a physical representation of what they're thinking of and it's such an important thing and something that Neil, when he was at school, his teacher said to his parents that Neil has got an aptitude for music. So they suggested maybe giving him piano lessons and then his mum worked for six months in order to buy Neil a piano and it all started from there. So he has been playing since a young age, but it is that appreciation melodically that just intertwines with his vocals and his compositional ability. Just a quick word on Neil's vocal stylizations and the main one that's gonna pop out here is that vibrato because once he starts singing, straight off the bat, we get the vibrato in every single vocal phrase that he delivers, but when we start the verse and we've got this, he was a man, and it's all the way through there, and it's probably a little bit more airy tone-wise than that. So we've got this, there was a man, man and that vibrato the frequency it's almost like that vibrato and the whole note is just floating on air that's what it sounds like to listen to because of the way that Neil delivers it and sticking with this first and second line of the song it gives you such a great appreciation of Neil's control his vocal delivery in order to keep it interesting the whole time because with this airy configuration he's got vocally that second line, a lonely man. He's going to that G4, but he's delivering it in that way, keeping that air in the sound. Because more often than not, when you hear singers go higher in their range and hitting a G4, for example, that lonely man, you can hear the amount of air that is kept in the sound. Lonely. So it's just a head voice sound that we get, such control when Neil does it, but what you'll find most of the time when people get high in their range, they go, a lovely man, and they have to try and belt in order to get that note. And it goes for all of the notes in the top part of their range, whereas when you're listening to great singers like Neil, he will give you a particular expression on every single note so that a G4, will sound different. However he wants to deliver that to you, he's got the vocal ability to do it. The other thing that Neil does so well controlling that airflow is the way that he sings in his lower range with exactly the same expression as that G4, for example, that highest note in this whole song, because when he sings, 
uh, the first note is airy like that. So we get the, a lonely man. And the man at the end of the line isn't, a lonely man. And it isn't totally detached from the same coordination he's using throughout that whole vocal phrase. So there is such control, such consistency, and it really pulls you in. You are so a part of the song and the story and the lyrical content of the song because of Neil's delivery. If you're watching this performance the whole way through without interrupting it, you just get that sense that the whole performance has been lifted purely by Neil's voice and not the change in pitch. Another thing to mention is that we don't have a key change here. So it isn't being shifted to another key to make it more dramatic because now we're hearing higher notes. It is all with Neil's vocal cords. The other thing about this composition is the fact that it's the same chord progression for the verse. And then when we get into the chorus, we move on a little bit, but it's got an F in there, C minor, F minor as well. And then once you've played through that chord progression in the chorus, it's then back to the verse chord progression. So it's not really progressive, but the chords definitely do the job, especially when you've got the melody line over the top that Neil supplies. So getting into these chords just quickly, we're starting on an E flat. And you might wanna play this on the sixth fret of your guitar. I've converted this all to guitar just for ease if you have got a guitar on your lap and you're watching this video. So the reason that I'm playing on the sixth fret is for this sus4, which we get this. And that, that sound of the sus4 does come in when Neil's playing up on the piano, but also the orchestra tend to emphasize that. So we've got the E flat, and this is the verse running down to the F seventh. At least that's what it sounds like, the voicing that Neil's using on the piano. So you want to make sure that your D string is the seventh there. And then we have the B flat seventh. And then we go back up to our E flat, but you probably want to start with the sus4. And then change back down to your standard E flat. So that was just an E flat sus4 with a little finger on and then the little finger taken off, which then just makes it an E flat. When we're getting into the chorus, we're starting on our E flat again. And we then move down to a C minor. And then we're going to an F minor. And then we're going over to a B flat. And then we go back up to the sus4. And that was the E flat sus4 to the E. There is something else that you might want to throw in there. As you descend from our E flat, the orchestra plays the D as effectively the root note of the chord. As you descend down to the C minor, and they also jump down to the B flat for the F minor. So that might be something that you want to throw in there if you're playing along or if you're doing your own version of this. And it is going to be minimal. We're, we're not going to be going and throwing in loads of strumming here. It's that. kind of vibe, just simple strumming because here the vocal really is the focus. But let's get back into the performance and watch it until the end. Well, this is another losing game. Huh. 
comes to an end And he kneels the have it what a performance and what a song just in general the journey that we're taken on with neil's voice when he lent into that sound also if you're looking for a vocal performance that has light and shade within it this is the vocal performance to look at because it's exactly the same notes that are being hit throughout the beginning of the song that you'll find at the end of the song as well. There's no pitch change here, there's no key change, so it is all in the voice. This isn't something that you're gonna be playing at a set tempo because it does flow and it's going to speed up, it's going to slow down, it's all down to however Neil's feeling when he's playing this and his expression on the piano, vocally, at the end there, a great example of the silence before the end of the song, just building that tension there, making it more dramatic, and the way that the orchestra are just on it the whole time, looking for Neil's cues. They're not reading the sheet music here and being really strict with the timing because they know that they're waiting for Neil's cue. And Neil could have elongated that ending for as long as he wanted to, but the orchestra would have been right there as soon as he had that final line of the song. And when I say that the orchestra aren't being strict with the way that they're performing, they are with the notes that you can see, they are reading the sheet music, but they are taking their cues from Neil. He's the guy that they're all focusing on and he's the one that's in control because it is his composition, of course. So he's gonna control exactly what tempo the song is being played at or more accurately being played with the particular tempo he's feeling. There isn't gonna be something here that can be applied to, say for example, 60 beats per minute. They're not following a click track. It's all just the ebb and the flow of Neil as the composer. I don't want this video to go on for too long, but as I'm sure you guys understand, getting into Neil's background is going to be a long process. I'm not gonna be able to fit it into this video because it would probably go on for hours, but I also don't wanna just brush over facts about Neil, the fact that he's written over 500 songs for not only himself, but co-written as well, and written for other artists, and the fact that Howard Greenfield as well was another lyricist of his, as well as Phil Cody that wrote this song. There's so much information in there, considering that Neil as well, we're looking at him during the mid 70s, but he also was very successful in the late 50s. So there's so much stuff to cover, but I will do that in a future video on Neil. But thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.